So, uh, let me open that example, which will also be uploaded at the Ortus usually. And let's see example. So for my case of my course project parameters, which, uh, which were here, I'm having a well, variable parameters. I have code word length M7 and generator polynomial Z, Z cube, uh, Z and one, uh, which is the very same which we have seen so far in the class examples during the lecture. So I will be brief without much repetition. What we need to do to calculate. We start with the given parameters. We have M, and we have generator polynomial. Also from generator polynomial, actually we can tell that our R is three. Or you can calculate that precisely from this formula as well. That's for you to choose, right? But basically they are the same values. Then when you have R, you can find K, how many information symbols per your code word do you have? Before going further, we need to have uh, the table of error vectors and syndromes. So, as I have already showed you, there are two options how to calculate each syndrome. First option, you take the error vector and divide it by the generator polynomial and read the remainder after the divisions. Here we couldn't divide any any single time, so the last three symbols have come as the syndrome. The same way we obtain the third syndromes, right? And starting from the fourth syndrome, we start to divide the process, right? So this would be the fourth error vector divided, this would be the fifth error vector divided, sixth error vector divided and seventh error vector divided. Also, the second option is to calculate syndromes consequently. So you start always with the syndrome. For example, if you have R equal to, uh, I mean, five, and that would be M equal to 31, then you would write your first syndrome as 0, 0, 0, 1, five digits, right? If you have R equal to four, you will start with four digits. You will also have different generator polynomial, but it's, well, a similar approach. So I will show for my generator polynomial and you can repeat that for your. So I am taking this previous. And well, actually you can first R remainders uh, right without any effort right so this is actually the inverse diagonal matrix you can see it here so if you have five digits then you would be able to write five first syndromes without efforts and you will have to start calculating starting from the sixth syndrome Right, so this syndrome is calculated from the previous one. So I take the syndrome zero, one, zero, zero, append extra zero to it, and I have four digits, so I can add my generator polynomial to it. It would be this remainder. Similarly, if I want to calculate the next one, to calculate this, I need to take this one, append an extra zero. I am having only three digits here, and I take them as my remainder. Likewise, I continue this process to the end until I obtain the last syndrome. So that's the first thing you need to do. You will need this error vector table, both for comparing your results and to, to find this last syndrome of the table for your uh, decoding device 
schematic diagram. All right? So after you have prepared that table, you need to select data block in the same way as that was done for group code by converting your name and surname into binary data symbols. So E, A, O, U, I, and so on are one, and other letters are L, B, C, G, D, and so on are zero. So in my case, I have K equal to four, but if you have K, for example, 25, then you can uh, repeat your name, surname, as long as you need in order to obtain those 25 symbols. That data will be used for coding, and if you need, you can convert it into the polynomial as well. So that would be the highest degree, three, second degree, first, and zero. So ones are located only in the third and the first, and first, degrees, right? So that would be Z3 plus Z in my case. However, I'm going to use the binary form and let me remind you once more how to perform the calculation for the code word. So we start with our data block and for that data block we append three or in general R zeros. Then we start division with our generator polynomial. One, zero, one, one. All right, so we start from the first symbol one. So if you have first symbol zero, then you start dividing from the second if it's one and so on. So basically the division starts from the first symbol one, specifically one, not zero. So Let's start. We can divide it at once. Add that together up. Have here one. Then we take the next symbol here. We cannot continue division yet because we don't have four symbols. Take the next symbol. Again, not possible to divide. And after we take the last symbol, we have four digits, we can perform division. So we get the remainder of 0, 1, 1, which is going to be recorded instead of these three zeros. So that gives us the code word. That is the task uh, That is the task 5A, I think, yes. Yes, that is the task of encoding. Now you need to at once decode that code word without introducing any errors. So meaning the result you have obtained is just going to be used to compare, uh, check for errors. So basically, we are using this code word without errors and divide it by generator polynomial. So once again, let me show you that. Since we added our remainder at the last position, then this division must produce no, no remainder. So remainder must be zero after this division if there were no errors during the transmission. That's important part. If, however, there have been any errors, then the remainder will show us where those errors are. So, we add that up, we put the next zero, we can divide, we put the next one, we can't divide, we put the next one, and the division is possible. Okay, and the remainder is zero. So this concludes that there are no errors in this code word. And indeed, there have been no errors introduced by us. Now, imagine that we force an error in the second position. That's converting zero to one. Well, 
in this case we calculate and well it's not long for me you will have longer data blocks and we'll have to write more carefully right but i think you'll be fine after you write that a few times you will understand the basic idea and it will be no problem you are again you are welcome to send me to check if you have done correctly i will try my best to answer you as fast as possible so that you know that you are doing it correctly and can complete this task already right so uh, while I have been talking, it seems that I have done everything correctly. So I put the next zero here. I have four digits, so I can divide again, right? Plus, here I have one. Now I put this one below. I have two digits and I cannot divide. I put this one. Now I have three digits, I cannot divide, and that's over. I don't have any digits left to put at the end, right? So that is the reminder. And from the table of error vectors and syndromes, this reminder corresponds to the error at the second position, which indeed happened for our case, right? That was the uh, task 5C. 5B was detection without errors, and for task D, you need to make a double error and see what happens there. Well, from group code experience, we already know that the error will be detected, but, uh, but it will not point into the correct place. So let's see what happens here. Once again, I will show you one last time how to perform this division. just hoping that you get used to it better right but again you can use polynomial form if it's more understandable and convenient for you i'm just uh, trying to save time uh, by using this shorter form so we add up together we put the next symbol we can perform division. We get complete zero, but we also have two more symbols to calculate for. We can divide here. And once again, we can divide here. So the remainder is pointing to the error at the position four, meaning that if we allow it, the received code word would be one 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 which is not what actually has been transmitted actually it was transmitted uh, one zero one zero and the remainder was one zero zero oh, uh, zero one one i mean right so as you can see, the double error is converted into the triple error. Unfortunately, that's the problem with all error correction codes, which are capable of correcting k errors. If there are more errors that it can handle, then it considers that there is an amount of error that it can handle. And unfortunately, well, it can turn out that it's even impossible to detect the error. For example, let's see the case of three errors in our code word. So my code word was, let me write it here, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And now I'm going to make errors in three positions, not two, you don't have to do that for your course project. I just want to show you one this final moment that, for example, I'm going to co uh, corrupt this symbol. That would be zero, this symbol and this symbol. That would be three errors. I'm intentionally corrupting these symbols just to make it uh, 
faster to make division. It actually depends on where exactly you corrupt the errors, so uh, it's not true for any combination of three errors, but for this particular case, I'm achieving the result I was expecting. So I divide this data with a generator polynomial, and surprisingly, the code says that everything is okay. There are no errors here. As, however, you know that there are three errors. So what happened is that when I have selected these errors, so I have selected error in the first position, this error vector, and this error vector, and this error vector. So I have gotten the total error vector of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. That's my, uh, I'm sorry, that's not, no, it's incorrect, not uh, those error vectors. I needed to start from below, right? This, and this, and this. So my error vector was rather this one, right? And what happened for syndromes is that the syndromes also have added up together. So, the total syndrome is zero. And actually, that is why in our example, we have received syndrome here. Because, well, let's see. For the error in the second position and the fifth position, we had syndromes, this and uh, this. If we add up these two syndromes together, we would get syndrome this one. So it's possible to tell where exactly the code will attempt to correct the error in case of two errors. And it's also possible that we select three specific errors that will be impossible to detect. Because, for example, these three errors will be possible to be detected. And these three errors will be impossible to be detected, right? Because total syndrome will be zero. And as for a di diagram, I have searched and unfortunately I was unable to find easier solution than to actually just put in series those elements. So you, you can always just put them in series, even if you have 31, improvise somehow and maybe make them like I don't know this, and then you can put them like this, right? By connecting each other. Because unfortunately, this program doesn't include the universal shift registers. Maybe you will be using other program, which we, which does. In that case, you must look for the universal shift register and use it accordingly as it sh as it has been shown in the lecture material here this one is universal shift register which has shift input right it has parallel it, sh it has only one input and it has up to eight in outputs so uh, the mode is also selected somewhere here by these inputs and can be used as shift register. So thank you for your attention. I hope that you have been able to understand this cyclic code, but if you have any remaining questions and are unsure how to calculate that or this, you can always ask me in your email and I will be glad to help you.